Welcome to another episode of The Latest with Maya. Today, I am very excited to be having a conversation with singer Aston. Um, thank you so much for being on my show. I am so excited to be talking with you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm really excited to be talking with you too. Thank you. Um, yeah, so let's uh, get started. I um I love all of your music. Um, so uh, where do you find inspiration for your songs? Mm, that's a really good question. I think it depends what I'm writing about. Um, I definitely write a lot about experiences that I've had um, as a woman and uh, also my close friends have had or my mother um, and also just things that I see as well. Yeah, just real life stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so where uh, did the inspiration for your song, Mama Didn't Raise No, come from? Um, it's funny. When I, when I go into studios to write, me specifically, uh, I'm not very good at feeling angry uh, and letting like my anger out. I find that funny enough, the the emotion that I get the most naturally is more like sadness so when I'm going into the studio that's my real time where I feel comfortable to just be angry about things and um I just went in with my usual producer and writer that I work with um that get me and I was just kind of I was kind of angry about the role that I felt that I had to take as a girl in society um, and me feeling like it's just something that I have to do. And I, I was, I was furious about that. I, I just wanted, I want to be my own girl. I want to make my own decisions. I want to do what I want to do. And I, I don't want to be told. <laughs> yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. I um uh I listen to your music all the time and it's one of those that it's like your music just resonates with me and so many people. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you. And I love your hair by the way. <laughs> like it. Yeah. Thanks. Honestly, it's I didn't I always wanted to have blue hair. Um, I've always wanted to have like colors and, uh, I didn't know how hard it was going to be to have, it's, it's not as easy as it might look. It like, I like a really dark blue and then I, I dye it. And then within two days, it's like washed out to this, but this is kind of like a mermaid kind of blue, which yeah, I don't mind as well. Yeah. <laughs> you. you would look very cool yeah. with blue hair. Or like oh, blue streaks. Thank oh, Ooh. thank you. <laughs> thank you. I've always wanted, my favorite color is red. So I've always wanted red streaks in my hair. Oh, so, you can do that. Yeah, so I, I've gotten some like hair extensions, red hair extensions, because I don't know if I really want to dye my hair. But <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I wonder if I can find a picture. I used to um I used to do that so I bought these like I think I bought these like ten dollar hair extensions from Amazon little like clip-in ones and I used to wear those when I had when I had blonde hair let me see if you can see like I had the oh yeah so I just had like I think I bought like four I made sure that they were heat and then I used to um just clip them into my hair when I wanted to use them and that was that was the transition of going blue I was like I want to try I had a red one too the red one was actually the red one looked a lot nicer than the blue but, um, maybe red is the next hair color I don't know 
Oh yeah, then we can twin. <laughs> Twinning, I love that. Yeah. I love that. that would yeah. Be yeah. Um, so is there a song of yours that is your favorite? Mm. Ooh. Uh, yes. I, I feel like the songs that are my favorites are always the ones that I haven't released yet. Um, yeah, but I would say, I would say the song that I like the most is, uh, a song that I released a few years ago called middle fingers. Um, that was the first time I met the guys that I work with all the time. Now the producer and the writer and that was the first time I, I, I had just met them and I was stressed and um, I felt like I had to say sorry a lot. I, it just became normal for me to always be like, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry about everything. Yeah. Um, and I felt that when I said sorry, it didn't have much meaning anymore. And I didn't like that. Um, so I went into that session and I was like, I said sorry say sorry all the time and blah 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 <laughs> and Jordan my co-writer was like I say sorry way too much and then that's kind of how we wrote the song from there so I like that one makes me feel good when I'm feeling yeah. like mm, I'm not good enough or I I can't do anything when I feel defeated I put that song on and I feel like I can yeah. do anything yeah, oh, I love that. Yeah, when I um, am feeling like very frustrated with everything, and I, I, the song of yours that I put on is Women Don't Know You Shit. <gasps> oh my God, I love that. I oh love that God. one. <laughs> I love that one too. That's a good one. Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Yeah. Um, so do you have a special songwriting process or any rituals that help get you in the right headspace to write? Ooh. Let me think of, I feel like it's always a little different depending on who I'm working with, but I would say the most important thing for me to feel like I can be really creative is listening to music that I feel like makes me feel something without lyrics. So I might listen to an old song or I might ask the producer I like this kind of sound or this kind of beat. And then when they start playing with that, it either makes me want to dance or it makes me want to express something that I'm feeling. So I would say something musical, like a beat or piano or some form of instrumental that makes me feel something inside or, or out, whether that's like dancing. I think dancing is a huge one. I came from a dance world back in the day. And if I hear something that makes me want to stamp my foot or get up or turn around, I, I think like that's, that's the kind of music that I want to yeah. listen to and create from. Oh, cool. I love that. Yeah. Um, so is there an artist or song that you consider to be the gold standard when it comes to songwriting and storytelling? Whoa. Oh my God, there's so many good songs. Um, an artist, definitely. I like Rihanna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rihanna was one of the first albums that I bought with my own money. And what I like about Rihanna as a person and as an artist is 
he seems to be okay with being imperfect. Yeah, I think perfectionism isn't her thing and she owns that. She's made a, I think she would say she's made a lot of mistakes, but she knows that that's part of life and that's how you grow. And when I was a little girl, I wanted to be like that. I wanted to say like, no matter what happens, um, I can do anything that I set my mind to. And I feel like she had that. So yeah. I would say her as an artist and as a song, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Hmm. I don't know. I I mean, any Rihanna song is kind of is kind of good. I like Fergie actually. Fergie, one of her songs, um, "The Big Girls Don't Cry," maybe yeah. was like a very strong pop song. But yeah, wow, you've kind of. You've kind of stumped me there with such yeah. a good question. Yeah, I'll <laughs> say you. that. I'll say that. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, is there a song um that whenever you hear it, it makes you emotional? Mm. Yeah, I've had a I've had a few. I've had a few of those. There's actually um a scissor song recently that made me cry in the shower uh what was it called I think it's called nobody gets me by scissor yeah that was the last one of someone else's that made me cry and then the last one that actually made me cry was I, I started writing a song a couple of weeks ago called Unhate Me. Um, and it's the first ballad kind of song I've ever written. So I'm a little bit nervous of putting that one out, but it definitely, it made me cry and it also made my co-writers cry as well. So <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I want to put that out into the world, but <laughs> it feels very real. So I would say those those two. Oh, cool. I love that. Yeah, I um I love writing songs and there um was one I wrote that there were a couple people I showed it to that they started crying and I was like, I don't want to make you cry, but I'm so happy that like this something I wrote like resonates with like you and resonates with you and so I mean I that's that's the point of writing music is to make people feel any kind of music whether that's like happy music sad music music that's like very poetic or music with no lyrics like it's yeah. in the whole point of it is to make you feel something yeah and it can just be varying things and some people might cry with one song other people might laugh with the same song it's yeah. like everyone feels things differently but I think that's what music is um the only to me it's the only universal language it's the only language that everyone in the whole world can speak yeah yeah um so what is the best song to describe your life right now? That's a good one. <laughs> oh. Um, maybe Don't Worry, Be Happy by Bob Marley. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I'm going to say that, you know, with the really, the whistling and yeah, I, I'll say that. Oh, I love that. 
Um, so what is something people are always uh, surprised to learn about you? Surprised to learn about? Oh, um, I feel like I would have to ask other people for that. Uh, I think... Maybe they get surprised that I am as unfiltered as I am with my music as I am in my personal life. I don't know if that is, I, I'm Australian. I'm not living in Australia anymore, but I grew up in Australia. And I don't know if, if that's just um, an Aussie thing. My mom was very unfiltered. I kind of just, I like to say what is on my mind and I feel like that has definitely gotten me in trouble. <laughs> but I think maybe people think that when they hear the music, they think it's a character. But it's very much a part of me. I definitely have like a lot of introverted things where I don't like to go out as much. But then I have a full 360 moment and I'm like, oh, I guess I should say 180. And then I can be my crazy, like, Aston self. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, my uh, sister and I always make fun of our mom because she has no filter, but then we are, but then we are exactly like her. So we don't have any, we don't have a filter either. So. I feel like that's I feel like that's a good way yeah. to be. What what yeah. area did you grow up in? Um most I I don't know. That always confuses me. I um in Colorado. Okay, okay. So are people in Colorado unfiltered or are you uh the unicorn? I don't really know actually because <laughs> I just it's so like um not normal to me I'm so used to it so I don't know I think there are yeah a lot of people that um like if I'm having a conversation with someone and I say something that completely unfiltered and then just like I probably shouldn't have said that they <laughs> they agree with me and say yeah probably not <laughs> I know, but you I mean you speak your truth and I feel like not a lot of people not a lot of people actually do that yeah. a lot of people hold things in and that makes sense maybe they were taught to do that or they think that that's normal, but I think it's beautiful to meet someone that can just like say it how it is, speak their mind. I think that's like a really good quality to have. So that's awesome that you and your sister and your mom are like that. I imagine the three of you have great yeah. conversations together. Yeah, we do. And yeah, we have a lot of very entertaining conversations that I, uh, I I can only imagine. Yeah. I would like to join as the fourth person in that very entertaining, unfiltered <laughs> conversation. I would love that. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. Um, if you had to pick any character in a book, movie, or TV show who is most similar to you. Who would you choose and why? I gotta love this question. Whoa. <laughs> um, I, have you ever seen The Princess Diaries? Yes, I love those movies. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want to be Anne Hathaway in the sense of like, I want to be, royalty sounds fun, maybe, but also I'm pretty klutzy and I'm unfiltered um, yes. and imperfect. So, and I feel like she embodies that, but I also, you know, that would be kind of cool to find out that you were like the princess of Genovia. Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, that sounds like that sounds like a kind of character I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> sounds fun. Yeah, I do agree with that. <laughs> Um, so is there a song of yours that you have been surprised has resonated with so many people? I would say, I would say the Women Don't Owe You Shit song, to be honest. Yeah, I was definitely that was when I was first kind of changing how I wanted like how I wanted to express or what I wanted to say and I was like oh this is gonna I was worried it was gonna be controversial I I, wa I was a little worried about it or how it would resonate and at first I was kind of like okay what's happening and then over time it organically started reaching people and I sometimes forget because that song came out a, a little bit ago and people will like you will mention the song and I'm like oh yeah I I I sometimes forget about it so I'm I'm surprised about that one the most I would say yeah um so who do you most admire and how has that impacted the way you live your life Whoa. Hmm. I would say, I don't think it's one specific person. I think just people in general. Um, I feel like there's a lot to learn from everyone. Like learn what you want to do, what you don't want to do. Um, yeah, I would say like various people have changed my life indirectly. For me, just hearing about their stories or, you know, how they live their life or how they get themselves out of situations. And I think people, just everybody, there's so much to learn from everyone and yeah, how they handle things and how they enjoy life as well. Yeah. I feel like sometimes I like hearing about like what someone's ideal day is and how everyone's can be so different of like how they want their day to be. Um, yeah. And that feels really like inspiring to hear that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, so what, no matter how many times you see it, always takes your breath away? Whoa. Mm. Well, this is such a good question. <laughs> oh, my. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> people having actually not even people just just anything in nature having a triumphant moment I would say you know like a person or even if it's in nature like actual trees or plants or something like that but seeing things and people um strive to be their best selves that always gives me like a shiver when I see videos of that um yeah I had one yesterday I, I was on my Instagram reels and I saw a child that um wasn't able he was in a wheelchair but it was the first time he was able to crawl himself onto his wheelchair without his parents helping him, assisting him on that. And it was filmed. And I don't know. I, I was like grinning ear to ear because 
you know, there's these moments in life where you might be told like you can't get to something and yeah, I think those moments, like my, the, the producer that writes my stuff, um, is like one of my biggest inspirations. Um, he, he had a spinal cord injury when he was younger and he was told he was never going to walk again. And he was like, I'm not, I'm not leaving this hospital until I walk on my own. And he was there for a while and he did that and all of his life is surrounded by his power and passion to be the best that he can be. And yeah, those things like they, they send shivers down my whole body because I think if, if he can do it, everybody else can be their, their best selves. You can always try. That's that's all we ha- we can do. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Um. So I love inspiring uh, and motivational quotes. And this week, my favorite quotation is it, it's a little bit long, um, and I I'm not sure who said it, but it says today I learned about a term called a glimmer which is the opposite of a trigger. Glimmers are those moments in your day that make you feel joy, happiness, peace, or gratitude. Once you train your brain to be on the lookout for glimmers, these tiny moments will appear more and more. Um, I was wondering, is there a quotation that has inspired you lately? Oh, first of all, I love that quote. I need, I I need to write that down. So I have it. That's yeah. really nice. I, I'm, I'm a bit of a quote hoarder. I will say I'm always saving quotes. So yeah. let me open my, I, yeah. I have a little, um, let me see. I, I can I'm also gonna... send it to you. <laughs> you please do that I I love I think like I like just reading through things like that um yeah let me see if I can wow um, I have a lot of ones in here that swear so I won't say them um Wow, there's a lot of different stuff. Um, I have, wow, there's none that really match how good. Oh, <laughs> this one's good. Um, don't wait until you're confident to show up. Show up until you're confident. And I think that one is like refrain, refraining to like, I don't think people just, necessarily like wake up and always feel confident or always feel their best selves sometimes it's about training our brains by faking it to feel that way sometimes if you keep telling yourself like you know I'm strong I'm brave I'm intelligent I can do anything I set my mind to even if you don't feel like that you might say that every day for months for years but if you force yourself to continue saying that you will slowly over time start to believe it so I would say that it's definitely not as good as your glimmer quote I love that I love it thank you yeah well I I love your quote I think that that one's a great one too yeah well it's, it's important to show up for ourselves yeah it is yeah um well it was so much fun talking with you and I I um really appreciate you taking the time to join me and I hope you have a great rest of your day and yeah I just can't tell you how much it means to me to be talking with you so thank you (laughs)
Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I was like, as soon as I saw it come in, I was like, yes, yes. When, when can I speak to you? I, I feel really honored that you like even know my songs. Yeah. Very sweet. I feel very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. I, yeah, I just, you made my day. So thank you. This has been the best part of my day. That's so sweet. Likewise. <laughs> Maybe yeah. my week and my month. My, the rest of my week and my month yeah. is, yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to be as good as today right now. <laughs> um, so just again, thank you um, for joining me. And that's a wrap on today's edition of the latest with Maya. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.